And during this time, I was discovering my neighbors. My neighbors were rather far away. They were like out here in the farm. I mean, the nearest farm is 800 meters away. These are, this is what it's like where I live. It's very similar. And the only thing is walking around all the time were sheep. So I finally said to myself, okay, Rubens always said, hey, what's in front of your nose? That was what was in front of my nose. So I started, and you know, being a New Yorker, and you come to this kind of environment, and I said, sheep? They're going to think I'm nuts. This is crazy. How, you know? But, so I started doing, I had been doing portraits of people in paint. I started doing portraits of sheep. I did them on paper with acrylic, and I did a whole series. I had about 30 of them or something. And one day, the guy who built my studio and who owned the sheep came to ask me a question. And he had not been in the studio, and he knocked on the door, and he came in. I said, come on in. And he was very curious, and he started to walk around, and I had all these... And he they will. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to be there for a little said, while. I said, but I know all of them <laughs> because they were real portraits, and he really did and know them. And that's how I started doing sheep. And then, at some point, he was. I had him build a chicken wire fence around my garden because the first year I had a garden, the deer ate everything, and he came to me and he said. Uh, I said I came, went to him and I said, I want a fence around the garden. I don't want to deal with the deer. And he said, Oh, I'll build you a nice little fence. And he, I said, No, you're not going to build me a nice little fence. You're going to build me a schoolyard fence because I don't want them in there at all. And he did. And then I had bales of chicken wire around. So I was, so I, somebody had been doing uh, using paper, making paper mache with chicken wire, and I. I took some and I started to make some flat paper mache sheets with chicken wire, laminating it on either side. And I started painting on, on, on this prepared surface that I was making, which made a really interesting grid that I could work with. And, and when I was doing these, I also, I don't remember, I had some wire. And I was driving with Sam somewhere and I had brought some of it with me and I started, I was playing with it while he was driving. It was a long drive and it was boring and I was bored and I was tired of, and he never lets me drive and I love to drive. So I was looking for something to do and I started making a wire sheep and I liked it sort of. So I set it on the uh, dashboard of the car and I made another one and I ended up making I don't know, half a dozen of these things, and a woman who had been, had bought my first, the first thing, person who bought anything from me in Sweden, she came out to visit and she saw this, and I said, what do you think of this? She said, I'll let you know when you make a hundred. I said, okay, <laughs> you know, and so I started making them, and then I'm looking at what the hell am I going to do? Them? So I was making little sculptures, I made little platforms for them to sit on, and then I started attaching them to the paintings because I was doing, the portraits began to become landscapes, the landscapes became sheepscapes, and they got more and more elaborate with sunrises and sunsets, and I was totally, got totally immersed in what I was living with. Chain, my colors changed. Uh, it's interesting, everybody says, you know, the Nordic light is different, it changes the way you paint. It does. Mm. Not, I didn't do it consciously. Mm. It happened. Mm. It just happened. So now the sheep here, how site specific or, or oh, this was very site specific. Oh. This was totally site specific. Uh, I, I, I. One day, actually, because it goes back a little, I was doing. I had these sheep, and somebody said, "Why don't you make a life-size one?" And I said, "Well, I'm a lousy welder, you know." And, Oh, but I know somebody who does this kind of stuff. He's a, he, he repairs boats, but he has a big shop. And I went to see him. He's a big, tall guy with a beard and blonde, and he's looking at his long hair. And I said, Thomas, do you think you could make this to life size? I had one of these little, little wire sheets. I think I could do that. We'll try. Yeah. So 
I set up a date and I went out there and I started with him and I did, drew on these steel plates that he had on a f big flat table and I made a drawing of an outline and then we started with the, I, I picked the right, the size of the metal I wanted, the, whether it was circular or flat, and I've worked with both with him. And I made a life-size shape. And, uh, and it was like drawing in space. It was sort of wonderful. These, these are all like drawings. They're, they're, you know, and no two of them are alike. I can't do them alike. I try. I can't copy them. They just, you know, they sort of, they look similar, but they're not. Do you feel that's from having started to do them as portraiture, where yeah. each one was yeah. distinct? Maybe. Maybe. So each one has their own personality. Yeah. yeah, and they're all different characters. And then I had, I ended up, at, I, sh I made one and I, I sold it. And uh, then when I had the next show, I made another one. I made a, a mama with two babies. And I had this in a show. I made a catalog for that show. And I sent the catalog to Jeff. He was up here, so he didn't get it till months later when he went back. I didn't know that he was up here. And all of a sudden I got an email from him and he said, Marty, I got your wonderful catalog and I love your sheep. And I have uh, an idea. And it was Jeff's idea. I mean, I had never been here. And so he started to talk about, and he sent me photographs of the barn. He said, you know, it's askew. It's not true. It's, and I thought it might be fun to have a sheep coming out from the barn. And it was, this was Jeff's thought. I mean, I had not been here. I didn't, you know. So uh, we started playing with it. And then I was showing the mama and the two babies at the gallery in Soho, in, in Chelsea. And he was in town. I said, go see. He said, no, that's not, he saw them and he said, no, that's not what I meant. And I said, that isn't what I thought of either, but I wanted you to see the wrought iron and how it works. Because these are sort of three-dimensional drawings and he wanted two dimensional, I, which I knew clearly that was from what I saw of the photographs. So I started playing and I made mock-ups and I made little, I took little posts and I made them out of small wire, but I did them. He sent me the measurements and then, and so it just grew. It took about two years. We've been playing with this idea back and forth and back and forth. And then I finally last fall made a date with Thomas the uh, welder, uh -huh. who, or he's, he's, he calls himself, he's a smith, he's a, he's a, Kunstsmed in French. Kunstsmed, yeah. yeah. Art Smith. Yeah. Very close to, German, yeah. Yeah, close to German, yeah. Yeah, it's close to German. And he's a lovely guy, and he was just delighted, you know, with the whole idea that we would do this. And I actually, I have photographs, which I sent to Jeff, of making it from the beginning, from the very beginning, including doing the drawing on the metal, and Thomas working and me working with him because he would do it. And I, when he does these, he's doing the welding, he's holding the, the uh, blowtorch, but I'm ev correcting every inch of it. There's every single inch is yes, no, move it this way, move it that way. So none of it is, I mean, his, it's his labor, but it's my work mm -hmm. all the way. Mm -hmm. And then when it doesn't work, I mean, and it, we went through it several times, getting the proportions right and getting the measurements right. And then I have pictures. I said, let's see what it looks like if it's up in the air. So first we did it in his workshop. And then he had a, a four by four post and we nailed it in. And he took it outside and he had a hoist and we hoisted it up against the Stockholm skyline.